Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today, I have many plants to repot. Not sure if it was a good idea or a bad idea to decide to repot these all in one video, but we're going for it. You know it's serious business when I go through the trouble of moving this table over <laughs> to in front of my couch. Okay, so as you can tell from the title and from these babies in front of me, today I'm going to be doing a big cactus and succulent repot. So I have two, four, six, eight, nine. Yeah, I have nine plants in front of me. These are actually some of my favorite plants to grow, even though I feel like I don't make a lot of content about them. That's mostly because they're pretty low maintenance, like they kind of fend for themselves and they don't really grow for like nine months out of the year because I live in the Pacific Northwest. But I do love them very much and I can't wait to kind of give them give them some more attention in today's video. Now, this is not my whole collection. Some of our most iconic cactus and succulent members will not be present in this video today. So if you're wondering where plants like my monkey tail, rat tail, bear paw succulent, things like that, if you're wondering where they are and why I'm not repotting them, it's because they don't need to be repotted. I've checked them all. I actually just repotted the monkey tail last week but I'm working on a whole separate video for that plant for propagation and repotting and all that stuff. So that'll be coming in probably a month or two, but today we do have quite a diverse selection here. So I think we're gonna be just fine. Um, so I guess I'm just going to like move them all to the side and then I'll grab them one by one and we'll talk about them and repot them. Okay, so I just have a selection of pots that I'm going to be using for this video. We'll just decide which one will be for which plants as we go through them. But the first thing that we need to do is make our potting mix. So my favorite potting mix for these guys is actually made by a local cactus and succulent nursery called Valley Succulent. So if you're on the island, some plant shops carry their soil mix or you can order it online or buy it. Obviously, if you drive up there, it's in the Comox area. Unfortunately, I do not have any of that right now. So I'm having to improvise, improvise, improvise. <laughs> Am I well? Um, so I have this plastic bowl right here and I'm going to be using this miracle Grow Cactus Palm and Succulent mix as my base, and then we are going to be amending it. So yeah, I definitely don't trust this stuff to just use it straight up. I mean, if you're growing these outside, you live somewhere hot, it'll probably be fine. But for me, this is much too dense on its own, but we are gonna be using it as a base. So let's just pour some of that in. Whoop. Oh my gosh, that's too much, that's too much. Shoot. Maybe I should lower the camera too. Okay, this is way too much. I need to put some back in. Now the nice thing about using the Miracle Grow is that it has a fertilizer in it that's gonna last for a couple months. So I don't really have to be too concerned about fertilizing right now. And this is really the only time that I do fertilize, so it kind of works. So the next thing I'm gonna be adding in is some charcoal. This is from Crystal Star Nursery. This is just going to help prevent rot. What else does it say on here? Naturally antimicrobial with the ability to absorb toxins and impurities, making it a great addition to your growing mixes. And it also offers, oh yeah, it says, it also offers good drainage and conditions the soil, so. Overall, a good thing to put into any mix, but since it does add some more like chunkiness um, and drainage, I think it's especially useful for these guys. I'm not, oh, I should have my, I brought a mask to wear. Oh gosh, look at my hand, shoot. Okay, let me get this on. Potting amendments are often really dusty especially perlite, but honestly, they're all kind of dusty, like pumice and even this charcoal is dusty, so I don't really want to breathe it in. 
gonna mix and I just put however much I see fit. I had said recently that I was wanting to experiment with adding charcoal back into my potting mix, so that's why I picked up a couple bags. I am going to be using it again, as long as I have it on hand at least. And I really like these like chunks from Crystal Star. That should be good for that. Maybe just a little bit more. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Next, pumice. We're just gonna pour some in. Ooh, see that? Dusty, dusty, dusty. This pumice I'm using is again from Crystal Star. You're probably gonna see me using a lot of these Crystal Star potting things over the next few months because I ordered like several bags of things. If you watch my recent plant chores, I do a little haul in that video. I do want it to be like, not dense, but a little, like not completely chunky just because I really don't water these guys very often at all. Okay. For like, oh, okay. Let's see how that does us. This actually looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. The main difference between this and my tropical mix or my aeroid mix is that I'm not putting orchid bark just because I don't think that these guys need it. It holds on to moisture too a little more than than these amendments do. So yeah, I don't bother adding that in for my cactus and succulents. So I guess we're just gonna start with this guy since he's right in front of me. So this is my blue torch or blue flame cactus from Crystal Star, or not from Crystal Star, oh my goodness, from Plant Haven Toronto. I unboxed this a few months ago. I love this guy so much. He's actually been living outside for probably like six weeks now. Hasn't really grown for me, but you know, that's okay. He can take his time. He's relatively new to the fam. I mean, maybe he has. Sometimes it can be hard to notice. Anyways, I'm going to get him out of here. Ooh. Oh, it's always so satisfying seeing cactus roots. Oh, wow, he's even more rooted than I thought he was gonna be. Look at that. Wow, cool, ouch, he's poking. <laughs> he's pokey, ouch. Okay, let's lay him down. Let's lay him down. So I am going to put this guy I think I want to put him in plastic, but a larger. We're going to size up to this one because since he's living outside, he is, you know, drying out because he's in the sun. So I want to keep with the plastic. Going to, that should be good actually. Nice, nice. Okay. Oh wow. So, how's everybody's summer going? I hope well. Our weather has been so crazy here. It was warm for about a week, like hot summer weather. And then this week we're back to getting a lot of rain. I know some parts of BC there was like weather warnings saying we're gonna be getting a month's worth of rain in the next week. So yeah, it has been raining a lot the past few days. Honestly, I've been okay with it. Like I like the rain, just not when it's every day for 10 months. You know what I mean? Since I got a break, I got like a week of warm sunny weather and then the rain came and I was okay with it. So it's all about balance, I suppose. <laughs> Like I can see why people who live in just like hot sunny places say that they really like the rain and like they wish that they were in rainy weather. Um, 
because it is a nice break from the sun when it rains. But anyways, it was cloudy this morning. Now it's back to sunny. I was just out there to grab the cactus that I had out there. And yeah, it's super hot and warm. My potatoes were wilting. I was like, oh shoot, I had to do an emergency water. Um, yeah, speaking of my potatoes, my garden has been doing okay. All of my herbs have been pretty good, except for my basil and rosemary. I don't know what's up with the rosemary. It's just been like the slowest grower. And I think it had a case of like powdery mildew or something. Um, which is going away now, but it just wasn't growing and it had like this white coating on it. And then, um, the basil, I just don't think it's been hot and sunny enough. The seed sprouted and it's just been like a tiny, tiny little seedling for like six weeks. So I don't know if that's ever going to grow, but, um, my potatoes are doing pretty well, except for when it's scorching outside, then they'll wilt if I don't water them in time, but they're doing pretty good. My strawberries are doing quite well actually. There's a whole bunch of strawberries that are growing in on it right now. I can't wait to eat them. I'm just waiting for them to ripen up. Okay, there is this guy. He's a little off center, but that's kind of my vibe. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes people comment and they're like, your plants are crooked or your poles, your moss poles are crooked or your plant's not centered in the pot. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what to say. I just, you know, I'm not a perfectionist like that, okay? <laughs> um, okay, so this guy has been upsized, very nice. Let's move him over. Next, let's do this one. This is probably one of my favorites. This is my variegated Opuntia. Oh, he's like too tall to even fit in the frame from Crystal Star Nursery. I got him like two years ago, probably. And he's grown quite a bit. I think he was just like this one and this one maybe when I got him. And so all of this is new. Um, I think this is the pot he's pretty much been in since I got him too. So I'm very curious to see what the roots look like. Oh, <gasps> are you well? Are you well, little sir? Oh. I think he's just very dry. Like, very dry. It's hard to tell from the... The pads don't... Well, they might be. But this is, like, dry as a bone. Which makes sense because this plant is outside now, too. Um, look at how cute the new, like, paddle... Is that what it's called? Paddle or pad? is coming in like look at how vibrant that is it's so cute anyways i think he's okay i hope so but super super dry um i am going to let's maybe throw this guy in plastic as well just because he's obviously not you know not vibing with the terracotta and the outside weather i don't blame him um yeah that's what i'm gonna do Anyways, yeah, overall, garden is pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. It's been a really fun thing to kind of dip my toes into. I cannot wait until I have a house and I can have a full garden. I am just going to grow as much as I can. Um, that's something that I'm really looking forward to in the future. But for now, I just have my little container garden. There we go. I had posted on Instagram that I was reading Where the Crawdads Sing, and oh my goodness, you guys, I finished that book. It is so amazing. Y'all need to read it. Definitely one of my favorite reads so far this year, Where the Crawdads Sing and The Song of Achilles. Oh my gosh, both of those books, phenomenal, amazing, just like such a beautiful reads. So... I really wanted to finally read Where the Crawdads Sing because I saw that the movie was coming out. And it's a book that I'd heard of before and I had always heard people say like, oh, this is such a good book, you can read it. And I just never had for some reason. So as soon as I saw that the movie was coming out, I was like, okay, this is urgent. I need to read this so that I can go watch the movie because you, know, you don't want to watch the movie before the book. At least I don't. That's just not. I like to read the book first. 
but then the movie's always kind of disappointing, so maybe I should do it the other way around, I don't know. Um, anyways, I finished the book and it was so good. I just like cried throughout that whole book. Like there was just so many little things that were just so touching and so beautiful that I was just crying. Um, yeah, it was just, it was so good. Um, I f actually finished a few books recently that w have been making me cry. I think on my vlog channel, I'm going to make like a mid-year, like kind of check in and talk about, there's actually like a tag going around on booktube. If anyone else is on booktube, I'm not like a super big viewer of booktube, but I do follow a couple people and watch their videos. And there is a tag going around, so I think I might do like a modified version of that and just talk about the books that I've read so far this year. I've just been really into reading this year, you guys, and it has impacted my life in such a positive way. It's brought me so much joy. It has made me feel so many emotions. I'm not kidding. I have not cried this much in like, I don't even know if I've ever cried this much. But it's like a good way. It's like I'm just like feeling so many things and just getting a glimpse into so many different worldviews and just, yeah, opening my mind up to all these different beautiful stories. It has been such a joy. I used to only read nonfiction and I don't know why I ever did that. Honestly, never again. Fiction is where it's at. I listen to nonfiction uh, via audiobooks, but I'm not sitting down and reading a nonfiction book unless it's very important. Man, cactus, you can really tell when they're crooked because they're so like stiff and straight up. Other plants, you can't really tell that much. Okay, this is what it looks like. I can't even get the whole thing in the frame, but maybe I should, well, yeah, should I back up the camera just a touch? Can you see the whole thing now? No. Okay, is that better? Now you can see me now too. I don't know why I wasn't doing this the whole time. Um, okay, so there is that gal. It looks like there's something on. Oh my gosh, I don't know. There's like webbing or something. I think it might be spider mites or something. Or is it just a regular spider? Do cactus get spider mites? I think it might be. Look at how weird. It looks like it has like a chunk out of it on the top or something. Can you see that? It's a weird shape. So it looks like there's some sort of pesty action happening. Hmm. I'll give it a spray off when I water this. Okay, actually I'm gonna put this guy over here. Have we only gotten through two? Oh my goodness. Buckle up friends. I've already been filming for like half an hour. So, oh, I'm gonna keep his little label. Some plants I just like to keep the little label. I don't know why. Okay, next, this is one of, one of the ones that I've been most excited to show you because it's grown so much. I don't know if anyone is even gonna remember this euphorbia that I have because I haven't really shown it that much. This is called something like Euphorbia Ricii Virgata. I'll have the names on the screen, but this first of all it used to have no leaves and then it gave out a couple leaves and i just thought it was the coolest thing ever and now this summer it has exploded with leaves it just looks so amazing i'm obsessed they look they're like so like soft and succulent too they're like fuzzy and like cardboard it's the coolest thing ever um so i'm gonna repot this guy my right eye has been twitching for days since friday this guy from the pot. This is another one that dries out super fast too. Oh, what the heck? Hello? Why does this plant just have like no roots? I am concerned. I am concerned. Um, okay, there's literally like the tiniest root system on this plant. My camera's gonna overheat, that's nice. So I'm literally just gonna pot it back into here. That was not what I was expecting. I thought this was gonna be like root bound. What the heck? If anyone has this plant, let me know what your experience with it has been because this seems weird. I've had it for a year now. I thought it would have more roots than this. 
boy. Well, at least he'll get fresh soil. Oh gosh. I'm gonna... Hmm. It's kind of tricky because they're so small. Okay, oh gosh. Now he's like top heavy. Oh, I wish I never would have pulled him out, but I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought for sure he would need to be repotted. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to figure this out, but yeah, he's very unstable now, so that's fun. Let's just set him over here. Let's try for my other variegated one that I love <laughs> and see, see how this guy, okay, I can see roots coming out of the bottom, so we're gonna be good here. This is a variegated Hornia zebrina, I believe. Lifesaver cactus, so cute. This is a baby that has been put off and it makes me so happy. I'm just really excited to see this grow more. So it's in this tiny terracotta pot, which dries out so fast, as you can imagine. So I'm gonna pull it out of here. Definitely needs to be in something bigger, I would think. I would suspect. Okay, so I'm glad this one actually seems to have the other one just flopped over. So this one actually has some roots. This is like bone dry as well. Like I said, it's just hard to keep up with watering this one. So I might actually do, what am I gonna do? Should I upgrade to terracotta? I think I might use this terracotta. Actually, you know what would be even better? I'm gonna be up potting this one and then Maybe I could use this terracotta. That would be a better size for it. Okay, I might actually put this into here and then this into here. Let's do that. This is also a Hornia zebrina, but this is the non-variegated version. So, I do not know what to expect from this one, but this grows out a lot as well. This has put out three or four pups. Not pups, but like offshoots. So it seems to be happy. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, root system looks really healthy on this guy. Um, I don't know if you can see some of the roots there. I don't wanna spill soil everywhere, but yeah. Oh, and I can see little pups that are gonna be, or little offshoots that are gonna be shooting up as well. It's just the cutest little thing. I cannot wait until this gives me a balloon one day. I am obsessed. Okay, so let's fill this up with some potting mix. Figure out how. I kind of want to break this one off and pot it back in, but I don't think I will. I'm just gonna leave it for now. I have a feeling this is gonna take off a lot more now that it's repotted. I feel like it was kind of bound shackled in this small one. You know how sometimes you like don't know something about the plant but you just like have a feel. it's just like an intuition. Maybe that's what the green thumb saying came from. Sometimes you just have a feeling. All right, so he is all potted up. Oh, this looks so cute. This is one of my all-time favorite succulents. I'm obsessed, obsessed. I have another one here that is definitely another favorite too. Okay, we're gonna move him over and then we're gonna do the variegated one. Kind of thinking maybe I should have added the variegated one in here. I could have grown them together. That would have been kind of fun, but I won't. I'll keep them separate for now. Probably once they get bigger, I'll pot them together. I'm really into like, not variety pots, but like combining different versions of, a, of the same plant into the same planter, if that makes any sense. Like I potted both of my different types of variegated Hoya Bella together, just because I think it's gonna look cool if I can ever get those plants to thrive for me. That is yet to be seen, but um, yeah, that's just an example. Yeah, I think this one is gonna be so much happier in here. I don't know how it survived in that mini terracotta for like a year. That's craziness. 
I think these are very hardy succulents if you're looking for something beginner friendly and the blooms are just like the craziest thing ever. Okay, that is what this guy looks like. All potted up. My camera has had the overheating thing symbol on the screen for so long now. I'm like, are you gonna turn off on me or are you not? I do not know. Okay, why don't we just do my other favorite that I was just talking about next. So this is my Stapelia Grandiflora, I believe. And I just think that this is such a cool succulent. It's fuzzy, like has a very light fuzz on it. So it's so soft, which is the main reason I fell in love with it. But I just love the way it grows. Um, this gets really amazing flowers as well. This has so much new growth shooting off of it. Can you see all the little offshoots? And on the top, there's new growth coming in as well. This is just such an easy and cool succulent. You can just squeeze it too and tell when it's thirsty. It's honestly foolproof. And then it has this little guy in here. I have no idea what this is. Um, I have had some people comment before, but I'm not sure. I think dragon fruit was what we were thinking it is, but I'm not sure. Anyways, the time has come to pull these all out of here. Oh my goodness. I'm nervous. I don't want to break anything off. Oh man. Oh. I am nervous. This has an offshoot coming from there. Oh boy. Okay, I can feel it coming. <gasps> wow. Okay. That is some nice roots. Oh my gosh. That is what I like to see. Look at how satisfying that is. Oh wow, amazing, amazing. Okay, this is all just like one solid thing, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. Okay, camera did eventually overheat on me, but we're back. I moved that euphorbia that was falling out of the pot over to the sink. I watered it and that helped it kind of be able to stick better in the potting mix. So he's chilling over there now and I think he's fine. Um, also, I'm realizing that when doing this type of repotting, I should have started from the biggest plant to the smallest because I'm wanting to reuse a lot of these bigger pots for the small plants. Like this one, I was just thinking about how much I love this snake planter and I want to use that for one of these other ones. I think I might actually want to use it for this one rather than the terracotta. I think I might do that actually. So this is my aloe. I have had several comments telling me what type of aloe this is. Don't know who's correct. Aloe marlothii, I think is a really common comment that I get regarding this plant. Either way, this is just a spiky aloe. I love this very much. I've had it for years and it's always been in this pot. So I'm very curious. Okay, keep getting interrupted here. I don't even remember what I was saying. Something about this plant, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to <laughs> reuse this pot for my stapelia. Uh-oh, this is a spiky one. Oh yeah, I was saying this has always been in this pot. I can see a root coming out the bottom. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see what's going on in here. Oh boy. Oh boy, this might be, might be one that I need to pry out of here with something. We're gonna do the butter knife method. Oh yeah, this, I can already tell, is very rooty. So I just go around the edges and kind of break up the soil. Then we'll see. Oh my God. Okay, here we go, here we go. Oh. <gasps> oh my gosh, why am I suddenly scared that there's gonna be like something in here? I think because I got a comment about that the other day about how someone was scared to put their plants outside because things would like go in the soil. Now I'm like literally scared. It's nothing in here though, I don't think. Holy crap. <gasps> 
Why have I never repotted this? I feel so bad for it. Oh my gosh, this is like entirely roots. Wow, this is one tough plant. Holy crap. I cannot believe that. Well, I can, but oh. Wow, wow, wow. I need to take a picture of that. How is this plant like doing okay? That is crazy. Oh man, this, oh shoot. Don't wanna do that. The roots are like kind of caught in the paint here. It's pulling it off. I need to take a photo of these roots. Let's just, oh yeah, okay. So I have this plastic pot that I was planning on putting this one in. Now my plan, let me put this down again. My plan is to pot the plant in here and then use this as a cover pot. Oh, does it fit? Not really, darn. My plan is not working. I cut. <laughs> I cut the rim off of this pot because I thought it would fit in here without it, but it doesn't really. Now this could work if it's a trailing plant or something or bushier plant in here, but with this aloe, I think I it's not going to look good because you're going to see this sticking out. So shoot, I'll have to save this for something else. Darn, he would have looked so good in this pot though. I wish I had something that that would work as a cover pot, but I don't think I do. And now I need to find a new plastic pot to plant him in. Please hold. I found this pot. I think this is gonna be what I have to use. I don't love it, but it's probably gonna be the best option for him. Um, yeah, that's gonna be the best option. So that's what we're gonna have to use. Kind of a boring pot. I wish I could put him into something cooler. I can always move him though in the future. If I pick out a cool pot for him, then I'll just transplant him. I need to get some diamond drill bits so that I can just like put drainage holes into the decorative pots that I want to use and into some terracotta. Like I have some terracotta pots that don't even have holes, which is always a strange thing, but some of them just don't for some reason. And there's always some cool ones at the store that don't have drainage holes too, so I'll be able to buy more different kinds of pots once I am able to drill drainage holes myself. My memory card has 16 minutes left, so we'll see if I am able to finish in that time. We only have three left, so I think we might be able to actually. I can't wait to see what this plant does now. Like, oh my goodness, it's gonna be, the world is his oyster now. It's gonna have so much room. Now I'm not gonna fertilize these guys for a little while. Um, at least not for probably the next month I won't worry about it just because there is some fertilizer in that Miracle Girl base that I used. Very nice, very nice. Okay, almost done. I still can't believe those roots. That is just something else. Okay, he is all finished. Look at that. This is his new his new home. That's quite the upgrade, isn't it? I mean, it's not as cute, but it's going to be better for him. So that's what we want. Okay. So now I get to use this pot for this guy. Whoop. Just going to see how much I need to fill it. Okay. A couple inches I'm going to fill. This plant is going to become a lot happier too, I presume, because he's pretty rooted as well. Go like that. Maybe I can put a little bit more. There we go. Okay. They're 
all gonna need a spray down after to get the soil off of the plant. I am obsessed. Wow, a cool pot can do so much for your plant. You can have any plant and if you put it in the right pot, <gasps> this looks so good. Check that out. I'm so happy with this. <laughs> That is so cute. It suits perfectly. Amazing. Okay, gonna put him off to the side. So we only have two more. One of them is this guy, which is most tail cactus or ripsalis bass if, well, I'm not sure, I'll put it on the screen, but commonly known as the most tail cactus. I don't know how rooted this is gonna be. Let's check it out. Not very, actually. It can probably stay in this pot, if you look. Not like a crazy root system. So I think I'm gonna keep it in here. Good to check though, good to check. I'm just gonna add a little bit of soil. You could use a water though. All of these plants are gonna need a water after I'm finished. Okay. Yeah, he's been putting out a lot of active growth this season, which is really nice. Okay, uh, would it be nice to put him in terracotta though? How many terracottas do I have left? This one, and then I have this euphorbia. Shoot, I think I wanna put this in the terracotta instead. I'll give the mouse tail terracotta next time. But for now, I think for the last one, which is this euphorbia, um, or dead plant or zombie plant. Really cool, strange plant that I have. It's just in this tiny plastic container and it keeps drying out for me. So I'm going to be upgrading it to a larger pot. Although this pot is terracotta, so I'm still gonna have to be on top of watering, but oh, it's just gonna look so cool in there. It's gonna look so cool. Okay. Layer of potting mix. That guy. Oh, I love this. I love this. <gasps> it's probably my second favorite. Oh, it's so hard to choose. It's so hard to choose. I'm rating them as for the transformation. So that last one is probably my first favorite. And then I think this one is my second favorite. It's just such an upgrade. It looks so good. Terracotta just takes new plants to takes plants to a new level, honestly. There we go. There is that guy. How cool does he look? I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I love all these plants so much. Maybe I can use this gold pot as like a cover pot for one of these. I just want to use this one. And I don't really like the way these plain plastic pots are looking. Can this fit in here? I could probably find something to boost it up and then it can sit like here. That might be cool, right? Just want to jazz up more of these guys. I really want to get a better pot for my aloe. Really not a fan of that just plain white one. I think I'm gonna put something in here to boost him up and then he can use this as a cover pot. Okay, I think I'm gonna water everybody and then I will show you guys what they all look like. So, catch ya in a second. Okay, I just watered them all and I wanted to show you them all cleaned up before I put them back outside and away to wherever they came from. I'm so happy with how these all look. I did end up putting my variegated opuntia in this ceramic pot, just because I really wanted to put somebody in that pot, okay? Uh, so I had to boost it up a little, but you know, this is good enough for now <laughs> until I find a more suitable inner pot for this container. But yeah, really happy with how these all look. This guy is kind of, you know, they're all a little bit crooked, but they'll straighten themselves up over time. This I really want to find a nice pot for. I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye open when I'm shopping around, but for now I'm just glad that I've uh, potted this uh, because obviously it was way overdue 
But yeah, super happy with all of these. I have a feeling that they're going to do a lot better now. I mean, I never even repotted this one. I don't know why I have it in here, but I did water him. So yeah. All right, you guys, that is going to be it for this cactus and succulent repot. Definitely give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to chat with you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.